cutting ties with my obsessive family only to face betrayal from my SIL and move abroad to finally find peace. I'm almost 30F and have a fraternal younger twin. My parents had us late after fertility issues and had been told their entire pregnancy I was a boy. Severe gender disappointment, neglect, and copious amounts of emotional slash financial slash emotional abessi. I can explain if needed in the comments, but my parents are irredeemable and I will never speak to them again. Basically ruined my entire childhood slash teenage years. I left home at 18 and when I asked for my papers, IDs, SSN, etc., I got them plus a cease slash desist order from my parents. I haven't spoken to them and don't plan on it. Recently my estranged twin sent me an email on my work email, which is attached to my new name because my parents gave me a unisex name that I legally had changed when I was 21. The email was basically a sad vent slash rant about how she wished I was around, how she thought our relationship should be because we're twins. Everyone says we should be so close, and her basically demanding, in a passive-aggressive way, invites for our family to my upcoming nuptials. I don't know how she found out, had my work email, or was concerned she had some sort of memory issue. TW. Physical abessi ahead. When we were younger, my sister realized she was the golden child and could torture me via my parents. She used to hide her things in my room and send my dad to go get her stolen. Stuff back from my tiny room in the basement. Results varied from being padlocked in the basement and only being let out for school or mealtimes. I had a small bathroom with a sink in the unfinished basement, or physical beatings. My dad and mom both used to hit me. I fell a lot down the stairs or slipped a lot. My twin, when we were 17, shoved me down the basement stairs. I ended up breaking my arm, got a concussion, and needed stitches on a wound on my head. Worst injury I'd ever had. My parents forced me to back up the story of me falling because they didn't want my sister to get in trouble. My friends at the time helped me leave two months later after graduation because my sister enjoyed hurting me. I found out three weeks ago that my husband's SIL, 22F, had posted previously about my estranged family, which isn't a secret. I am very honest with what happened to me and with the state of my estrangement with that family. On her blog, Re, Influencer, she left out a lot. Her followers encouraged her to mend the relationship between me and my family. My twin's emails suddenly became screaming phone calls and threats, so I had sought out a restraining order but stopped at a cease slash desist for my twin because she suddenly stopped the harassment. Thought it was over. I was very wrong. At my husband's parents' house during dinner, she stood up and told me she had a surprise for me. She told me she had driven my sister up a 26-plus hour drive so we could reconnect and be a family again. I have CPTSD from my twin. Her parents were mortified and took me to back room and my husband went straight to calling the police and yelling at his sister. Apparently, she didn't think the abessies against me were that bad because my twin lied and told her she never laid a hand on me. My twin was out in her car and when the police showed up, she turned on the waterworks. My sister tried defending her until my husband's mother told the police about the cease slash desist order. The police took my twin to the airport to take an immediate flight home at my SIL's expense. She was given a formal warning. Our police force has its hands tied until she does this again. No arrests on first warnings. In the weeks that followed my SIL has been completely ostracized from her family. My husband and her father ripped her a new one for pulling this stunt. Her mother refused to speak to her because she was so angry someone would try to force a victim to see their absurd. Mael is former DV advocate. My husband has agreed to give me the final say on when slash if I'd be alright to hear SIL on her apology, which will be a ton of beal shit, I'm sure. Problem is, I don't want to see SIL ever again. I know she had high hopes to be a godparent or good aunt when we have children, but finding out what she's done cut deep. I don't want to see or speak to her again, and I have no idea how to say this to her, because the level of betrayal and hurt I have in my heart is huge. It's been three weeks, but I feel the same as I did before. I've known her since I started seeing my husband years ago. I watched her grow up and support her. She knew the whole story down the smallest detail but chose not to believe me. How do I even begin to approach this? Edit. Thanks everyone. I was busy today so I didn't get to respond to everyone's comments but I did read them all. Thank you so much kind strangers for the awards. I've decided to write a burn letter while at work and it's helped immensely but I'm not gonna send it. My husband is behind me 100% in my decision to go ahead and send us I'll a cease slash desist letter and tell her she's not welcome around us for the time being. I've told my MIL slash FIL that I don't want to speak to her and that I honestly don't think I ever want to. I want her to stay away. MIL wasn't upset about the holidays we were set to host this year. When I said SIL will not be welcome in our home. SIL's blog posts were removed and every other trace of my life being posted on her page, photos with us at our wedding, happy birthday messages, etc. have been removed. I didn't even know these were on her blog, but she complied in removing all of it. As for my twin and estranged family, legal things are in the works. I have therapy set up for the next two months and will be looking into anti-anxiety meds to help. I'll update you when slash if I have more news. Update. Our attorney called us and our restraining orders, which we have waited three weeks for, have finally been approved. My parents will be served this week, same as my sister, provided we have their correct address on file, 
they live other side of the country. Fingers crossed. After speaking to my therapist and getting on some new anxiety medicine, I decided to sit down and talk to my ILs and my husband about what had happened. It had been three weeks and you guys are right. I'm allowed to be hurt and upset about this for a long time. My therapist said I needed to prioritize myself and my healing over my people-pleasing behaviors. I wrote a letter but decided I'd not send it because I didn't want SIL to use it as ammunition on her blog for sympathy points. So MIL and FIL have five children. Eldest BIL, older SIL, my husband, and then SIL. Eldest BIL has a best friend, middle BIL, that the ILs adopted when he was a teen. When this all went down three weeks ago, eldest BIL and older SIL were present. Middle BIL wasn't. I guess middle BIL is one of the family members that babies SIL. I explained that I was thinking six months minimum for no contact slash no being around SIL. MIL thought it was a good timeline to teach SIL that this behavior wasn't going to fly and FIL agreed. No issues there. But when MIL slash FIL explained to their children that SIL was on timeout with us for her behavior, middle BIL and his girlfriend got all mad about it. I got a text today, thinking it was a friendly one, and open to, I fail to see why you'd ban SIL from the holidays for a simple mistake. Seems kind of excessive, and really inconveniences a lot of us for the holidays. You can't even be around her? Grow up. Really hope you have a plan for the holidays. What are you going to do? Force her to stay at someone's house while the whole family goes out or something. Honestly, she's a child. She's allowed to make mistakes. Bad enough MIL slash FIL threw her out, and now you're going to take the holidays from her too? MIL and FIL decided they were done housing SIL when she pays for a perfectly good room in an apartment 30 minutes away, where the roommates are driving SIL crazy only because they're all working from home due to COVID. MIL calls it a harsh dose of reality, and FIL says it's a month overdue. I just handed my husband my phone and decided I was done for the day. Told him to handle it however he sees fit, just not from my phone, because not my circus and not my monkeys. My husband sent screenshots to himself and just sent out a massive text to the whole family on their chat. It's been brought to my attention that some of you don't agree with my wife slash I's decision to exclude SIL from our home during the upcoming holidays. After some thought I've decided that I don't feel comfortable hosting the holidays this year like planned. I'd like to take a break from everyone until they know the whole story and anyways, because of COVID, I think we should all stay home this year, unless someone else would like to host. Cheers, husband. This is very my husband. We had already talked about how I didn't feel up for holidays this year. We have the bigger home of our nearby family and have hosted for two years, and he decided this might be the year to take a step back from it. I like the idea, because my anxiety is at an all-time high and I'm having nightmares because of what happened. He asked me to read it before he sent it. Got a few texts earlier from his grandparents, who spoil SIL, that they needed to talk to us ASAP, but I forgot to charge my personal phone. Husband also forgot to charge his too. Missed a few calls from his aunt and uncle, plus one from Middlebro. We're assuming he's P said. We have a bet going to see if someone's dumb enough to come by our house tomorrow. Everyone knows we have tomorrow off and try to talk us out of it. Husband said he's gonna answer the door in Ked and say we're busy. See who comes around after that. Update. Gran and Gramps did come by. My husband answered the door with a beer in one hand and his flagpole flying free in the wind. They were pretty disgusted and left immediately but were pretty much extremely angry. They confirmed what we thought. They think that we're the ones tearing the family apart. Needless to say my husband and I will be taking holidays off probably indefinitely with his grandparents. I sent them a long text about this being me choosing to heal and taking time off, rather than being a forgiving doormat that they expect me to be when it comes to SIL. Her actions have consequences and they need to let MIL slash FIL handle this one. Update. I'm a midwife. I work mostly in telehealth at the moment because we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm currently self-isolating because we have a woman at viability in three weeks and I need to be COVID tested slash COVID free before I even consider going into the office. Gran and Gramps showed up with SIL in tow at my clinic, which was locked because we weren't expecting any appointments and aren't taking drop-ins without prior authorization. So they ended up at our locked door and just did the reasonable thing and left, right? Nah, this is JN territory. Their P said and now want to yell at someone. They banged on the door for 10 minutes until my clinic's RN came out of her office with her phone on. We have audio and video recording inside, which is legal per posted signs on the property. She told them she wasn't letting them in, who are they, and if it was a medical emergency to seek attention at the hospital, this is the whole reason we have audio recording inside the building. CYA. They said they needed to speak to me, and the RN said too bad. She then dialed the non-emergency line and reported them for attempting to enter the clinic when the clinic isn't open. She then just dot went back to her office and sat down, like she's supposed to. Gran and Gramps got met by an officer that happened to be nearby and talked to them. He then called me because I have G slash G blocked. I'm gobsmacked here. They brought this selfish POS to my workplace, a place of very delicate health and immunocompromised people slash babies, and demanded to be let in? Yeah. No. I'm furious. I called my boss. I told them what's going on. We called the cops back and told them to write them a warning for trespassing. 
They have now been given one. My husband's piece said and called them practically shouting down the phone. Their excuse? SIL needs to give me an apology, so we can all go back to being a family again. I took the phone and reminded them I have final say and if they meet any potential great-grandchildren. We hung up and called MIL. Ever hear an angry Swedish lady? MIL's piece said over the phone and I can hear it. My husband's telling me the last time she was this angry. It ended poorly for the other person. He took our phones and blocked everyone. We've decided to stop visiting, taking calls, and just focus on ourselves for the next year. He's mad and upset, apologizing every hour or so for his grandparents. We're trying to deal with my parents and twin on the other side of this. Restraining order received. They signed for it. No explosions yet, but my twin is losing. Her. Mind. Decided today that I'd up my therapy to three times a week. I'm so tired. Update. So the restraining order was delivered. My twin, SBRM donor, and egg donor all received them. They were signed for and I heard nothing from the parents, which was weird. I expected my egg donor to come unglued because I am the only one capable of biological children and that's my egg donor's obsession. Today I woke up to police at my front door. Yes, they know we have given the other parties restraining orders, but this welfare check was called in by my Jay and grandfather. He's a cheating, scummy b-starred that treats my twin like the sun shines out her as. He apparently called them and spun a tale about my husband. Trigger warning. My husband apparently beats me every day, refuses to allow me outside. I'm held hostage at home and he routinely degrades me in front of family or his friends. The police said flat out they didn't believe it because Jay and grandfather claims all his evidence is from my estranged twin, who is not allowed to be a witness because of the RO. We let them in and showed them our home, our dogs, and the ducklings. They love the ducklings. They told us they'd file a report to counter the original report and that they'd be sending a copy to our attorney. Now we won't get any welfare checks by them because it's obvious they're fake and a waste of time. My attorney contacted my Jay and grandfather and sent a long-winded statement of basically, We'll send you a cease and desist if you continue, and only slapped my name on it. We figured my husband's on it would further their alternate reality. My JM aunt, the woman who helped me escape, sent me screenshots of a text she received from my estranged twin. JM aunt says to be on the lookout for her deranged AS. The screenshots were sent to our attorney. Twin's text basically reads as some sort of angry rant. Copied and details removed below. Eldest is married to a sociopath. She would never not invite us to her wedding or cut us off without someone making her do it. We're her family for FCK's sake and she just cuts us off? I saw her. She looked awful and skinny like they're not feeding her. She had a black eye. She had a bandage on her hand and scratches down her arms. Her clothes were filthy. I'm telling you she's in danger and the police won't listen to me because of a piece of paper. Face with steam from nose I can't stand by and watch my sister get him ridered because this man is holding her hostage. His family doesn't even like him and is afraid of him. If you're not going to help at least do me a favor and tell her that she has to contact me because she needs to leave him, tired face. So in twins reality, I'm an upset spouse that is only doing what my husband tells me. Because it can't possibly be the physical and emotional abessee she put me through when we were teenagers. Her last text was very not okay sounding. I pray to God folded hands she doesn't get pregnant with this sociopath. What if he hurts her and her baby? Egg donor is concerned about this too. What if he beats her while she's pregnant and he murders their baby? We forwarded all this to our attorney. He's working on protecting us from these kinds of false allegations by creating a paper trail of statements and evidence of our happy marriage. But she's still losing her mind on the other side of the country. We're locking down our jobs and bosses by informing them of what's going on. Not taking any chances. Also Grand slash Gramps are not speaking to us currently. We need to apologize for our behavior. Husband told them to expect to wake up and find 200 plastic pink flamingos on their lawn in lacy women's underwear, if they continued. Yes, we own that many pink flamingos. He was in a frat in college. Update. So SIL broke into our home. Things of little to no value were taken. She took MIL's car and fled to her new boyfriend's house a few states away. The ILs have cut her off completely, except for things they're legally supposed to provide, and told her to never ever come home. We moved to an apartment in three days and told no one where we were going. SIL had a breakdown with MIL on the phone before hers was disconnected. Screaming that I was a liar. I turned the whole family against her. She should have been warned before they cut her off and she said until Dage divorces me she's never coming home. On the other side, I'm taking a leave of absence from my job because I developed a stress rash that turned into hives. I spent two days in bed and woke up to a call from friend from college. In college, I had the emergency surgery that messed up my insides, caused the damage that led to my tubes being defunct, and needed to spend weeks taking it easy. My college dorm saw me carted out in an ambulance, and their huge support after got me through it. This friend has been my rock through all of that, but the news I could do IVF is recent. I hadn't remembered to message him about it because he's busy with his new baby, a healthy girl, and his husband. Apparently friend got a request and message from twin saying she's worried about me and my unborn baby, that DH is beating me and worse daily, 
and that she needs someone to check on me for her because DH forced me to get a restraining order. Now my name is real common since I changed it. Think along the lines of Jane Smith. He told her she just have the wrong person. His Jane Smith has a pacifist husband and last he checked, can't get pregnant because of a surgery. He assumed wrong person. Twin sent him an angry response and insisted that no, she has the right Jane Smith. And what do you mean can't get pregnant? He blocked her and called me. He apologized, but I honestly felt relieved. I didn't have to do it. Someone else did. Immediately though, our attorney got an angry screaming phone call from egg donor that he let go to voicemail. I haven't heard it, but it's something along the lines of, I need a copy of her medical record because I'm her mother. Jamant got a phone call and instead of listening to the abessi, Jamant assumed I told egg donor about my medical trauma and just told her, it's old news, egg donor. Everyone knows about that surgery and hung up. So egg donor and twin are now freaking out and sending me emails violating the restraining order, demanding I explain why I had my tubes tied. How dare I do something like that when they counted on me to give them grandchildren? And the email straight out said it. We had hoped you would carry a son for twin, but your selfishness is an abhorrent affront to God. I'm just a means to an end and they really don't care. Thank whatever old God is listening. Our attorney is already on it and wants to see them go away. Update. This is marked advice not okay because I'm getting constant DMs of people urging me to seek legal counsel. We have an attorney. We are speaking with law enforcement. Anyways, SIL is in police custody. To make a long story short, middle BIL had her at his house. His GF witnessed some suspicious behavior and her having some serious blackouts. Turned out to be DRGS. Middle BIL was hoping to get her to sober up and get her to a treatment program because she'd die in jail. Well, he's now single. His parents are furious and we now know what was going on with SIL in the background. GF turned her in and moved to her sister's. She also turned over some seriously concerning messages between BIL and Grand slash Gramps. We sent her flowers and wine. We sent the screenshots to MIL slash FIL. DH was heartbroken. Everyone else knew she was using and never said a word to us. The entire situation has left him utterly shattered and torn. Same as her parents. He told me last night if he knew she was on DRGS, he'd have gotten her help long before any of this could have happened. He blames himself and says that maybe it could have been prevented. I told him she made these decisions, under the influence or not and would have to live with her consequences. We went to bed and didn't think anything else of it. I woke up to phone calls from Jay Wyatt letting me know that a strange twin had a meltdown apparently two days earlier. Twin had been taken to a specialized clinic after making some threats. It was egg donor and SBRM donor's fault. They had apparently told Twin that it was entirely her fault I had decided to be child-free. Their new narrative since someone told them I didn't in fact have my tubes tied. She's the one that threw me down the stairs and tried to KLL me. She's the one that called me vicious names and insulted me constantly. She's the one that tried to poison me, I have allergies, and also destroyed every relationship I ever had as a teen. It's no wonder I turned out to be such a terrified, traumatized woman that refuses to have children. I was raised with a monster. Except we were both raised by monsters, them. But no. In their narrative, they did nothing wrong. They were angels to us. JY Ant said that Jay and grandfather had called her to relay the tragic news that Twin was essentially clinically insane. And let me tell you no, something stinks like the effing darkest pits of a garbage dump. Twin did all of it? She's being cared for by a clinic? If they think they can throw one of their children under the bus to save face with me, they're wrong. Play BDCH games. Win BDCH prizes. Enjoy the prize of losing both your kids, one of which is a mess and the other is leaving the country in eight weeks to escape you, to let you live out the rest of your sad pathetic lives alone. Good F King riddance. But there. An update. I'm gonna go scratch the office cat now and see if she'll snuggle me. Update. My biological parents, egg and SBRM donor as I refer to them, are in trouble. I told you they tried blaming my estranged twin for all of the abessi I went through. As if I'd somehow forgotten how much they upset me and allowed my twin to abessi me as well, and it didn't work. I never reached out. I'm glad I didn't fall for it because half the story was a lie. Yes, twin is in the hospital because of a meltdown, but she wasn't committed by our biological parents. Our biological parents upset her for three days straight. They withheld food and water, woke her up at all hours to scream at her, and didn't stop even when she begged them to leave her alone. They also refused to let her leave. She didn't get put in a hospital because of her meltdown. She went to urgent care because they had hit or thrown things at her for three days off and on. She was injured. She had the meltdown while she was being seen, which caused her to be taken to the hospital. Her doctor and mental health team reported it and got the police involved. At this point in time, we have been told that there will be charges against them. Their reputations are absolutely ruined. Our lawyer said they'd be lucky if their jail sentence that wasn't a minimum of a few years. We no longer have anything to worry about with them. We leave in 30 days. We've told DH's family, and there's a whole mess going on with them learning we are leaving for sure. But our move hasn't been sorted, and we have a lot to do, so I'm focusing on our move. We can deal with his family after, DH says. Fingers crossed. Update. We left. We didn't tell a soul we were leaving. 
worked out in our favor. We landed a few days ago, are in quarantine now at a friend's house, and the animals are with us. Everyone's happy and healthy. Not me, but I'll explain later. DH feels utterly relaxed seeing his friends. He's back to being his jokey self. He called his family yesterday to tell them we were officially gone. It didn't go over well with a few of them. Gran and Gramps were furious. They demanded to know why he'd left the US and gone back home, stating we wouldn't have stable jobs or a stable home in home country. DH Gray rocked like a champ. Thank you kind Redditors for helping me explain to him what it was and how to use it. He explained that he would still be financially reliable if they needed something. We've paid for meds out of pocket for them before. But we aren't coming back. We intend on staying here. Our real estate agent we're working with showed us, virtually, a few nice homes in the area a while ago. We have put out an offer and got a response, which brings us to why I'm sick. The house we want has three rooms plus an in-home office, with big kitchen, and would be perfect for a family. We had interviews before we left with the fertility clinic, all virtual, where my new doctor went over my file. He approved us, pending some tests in a few weeks, for starting treatment at their clinic. We don't have a start date, months away, but I stopped my migraine medication in the meantime, under his guidance, as it takes a while to fully leave my system. We're switching to a different one soon, so I feel all sorts of sick right now with migraines. DH also can't have lots of coffee per his suggestion, so he's been grumpy in the mornings. DH relayed only my short illness to MIL when she called to check on us and Gran was in the background. She made a passive, aggressive comment. People shouldn't be running away to go have babies away from their families. It isn't right. And DH lost his SHD because he was already grumpy. He's never yelled at her before, but he told her if anyone was to be blamed. It was her husband, her, and SIL. Gran started wailing, her typical go-to, and DH told her to shove it. I don't want to hear fake cries from the kettle today. He retracted us, offering to financially help them if they were going to behave like this. Emile said goodbye and hung up. Now we're awful people, and a chunk of the family on one side is demanding we apologize. We refused. SIL also reached out to us, probably aware of herself now that she's been forcibly made sober by being in jail, but we refused to contact her. I can post a transcript of the voicemail later if anyone wants to read it. Also, our attorney informed us the charges against my biological parents were dropped. No explanation. Twin was checked into a care facility for immediate psychiatric inpatient treatment, and I know my parents did that intentionally. They're now playing that our daughter is unstable and we're victims of her abessi, like they didn't raise a monster in their own image and are now suffering the consequences of enabling her. They reached out to our attorney to possibly have some mediation on our restraining order, which our attorney promptly used that opportunity to inform them we'd immigrated to another country and won't be returning to the US. He's no longer our attorney after X date and hung up at our attorney's insistence. I decided to call their pastor a week ago and had a heart-to-heart -heart with him over video about the situation. I explained my side of things and informed him that I was severely uncomfortable with them being involved some church stuff. He had some tears of his own, looked at the stuff I linked him to, emails, screenshots of text messages and their voicemails, and thanked me for being brave slash praised me for finding happiness in my own faith. I cried a lot because I'd never had their previous pastors believe me before. He told me that he would be handling it with severe urgency. This was all told in confidence. We have confirmation they were removed from the church activities a day later. Which leads us to today. This morning we received an email from them to husband's account, how they found it ick, that basically made me want to throw his phone. I'll post it if someone wants to read it. Basically we left perfectly on time because they intended to buy a home a few hours from us and ask us to join them in their counseling while they made it up to OP for her neglectful childhood. Of course, we'd have to drop the restraining order anyways. That's been the last 18 days. Thanks for the people reaching out to check on me. I really appreciate it, and the links to all the strategies slash methods you guys have used. Very helpful. Edit. You guys are so sweet, but we're not in Sweden. A lot of families in the 1800s immigrated for work to different countries, and lots didn't return. She practices the traditions of both countries, speaks the languages, but she considers herself Swedish. Smiley face. Update. So for starters, I found out someone tried to open a credit account in my name. Luckily my husband was purchasing our new dream home. We move on Monday with his own credit and no big deal. I already had my credit frozen. I also require an IRS PIN for my taxes and my SSN is locked as well, long process. This was to prevent my biological parents from opening accounts in my name when I left home. They did threaten that a lot. You know how they were buying a home near us? Well, they didn't get the offer accepted. An outstanding debt of $180,000 in my egg donor's name kind of ruined it. I found out she spent 90K on my twin's wedding and honeymoon. Then financed the divorce and the rest was debt related to other things. JY Ant relayed this all to me because she's hearing from Jay and Grandfather, who is slowly turning JM. JY Ant warned me to check my credit because suddenly they could afford to rent a nice house. And we're bragging about it because it's down the street from my old home. It's near our new family. We can't wait to meet them. Was met with FIL muttering about things that would land him in jail. 
and MIL brandishing a rolling pin at her phone when we FaceTimed them. Yeah, they were using my name as a second person on the lease. Well, it didn't go through because of the freeze. She got asked a lot of verification questions, and her application was absolutely denied. So with just my SBRM donor's credit, which is also SHD, they didn't get the nice rental house, or the house they wanted to buy. Also their house that they sold, had a lien, barely have any money from the sale. They were sofa surfing at Jane Grandfather's house, and he was livid that the application was denied, for no reason. Jay Wyant clued him in. He kicked them out, told them he'd have no such financially dependent louses in his lovely home. So they're currently sleeping in their car. I already filed for the identity theft, even though the applications were denied and nothing happened, but it's attempted fraud. Still serious. Needless to say, Jay and Grandfather said kicking them out was met with lots of crying slash accusations, and he was horrified of their behavior as adults. He remarked that maybe I was doing the right thing by keeping them at arm's length, because while they were over, every time they'd fight the two of them would get physical. He also told them that they'd be lucky to even be allowed in his home again. His brother stole his identity when they were younger. Jay and Grandfather ended up paying the amount owed as a young new husband, and it ruined buying his first house. He still doesn't fully believe what they've done to me, but, all in all, I wish I was there to see their downfall. It seems they may be running out of places to go, and with a strange twin's care being suddenly being passed to Jay and Grandfather. I'm certain there's a storm coming, but I'm thousands of miles away safe with my husband, currently excited to be starting our IVF journey in January. So excited. I feel like I'm on cloud nine right now. Does it make me a bad person if I wish they'd go sequester themselves to a deserted island and rot? Update. I guess SBRM donor finally had enough. He got his old job back, moved into a friend's house, and told Egg Donor that everything that went wrong in their marriage was her fault. It turned into a violent encounter, and Egg Donor went to go scratch out his eyes with her hands. He threw her out of his friend's house, and basically told her that he didn't have a family because of her. He was apparently unaware of her using my credit to try for that house, and when he found out, that's where he drew the line. Not at beating me, not at torturing me, not at screaming constantly at everyone, or any of the other terrible things she's done. Oh no, it was piecing off Jam Grandfather. The man that he didn't want to PSS off because he wanted all his money. Then I guess according to JY Ant, he realized that he could just dump egg donor and start over. He could have a loving, caring wife, start a new family and have sons, and just leave. They have no assets, so a divorce would be simple. Egg donor made it easy because she immediately assumed that I'd gotten to SBRM donor. He cleaned up his life and left her. He had to be talking to me because I'm the only other one who did that. So she wanted him a second time demanding he give her my information and this time he decided he was calling the police. She was throwing rocks and screaming at him. A full lawn tantrum. When they tried to stop her she went crazy on an officer. She tried biting and kicking. Finally went for slapping and screaming. Well, she's in jail now. As ULT on an officer and pending psychiatric evaluation, she probably won't be released anytime soon. I've since learned that SBRM donor is kissing Jam Grandfather's AS to be let back into the family. Joke's on him. Jam Grandfather arranged a strange twin's care for a long-term care facility that he'll bankroll and he decided he was gonna sell his house. He already rewrote his will and left everything to Jay Wyatt. He wrote me a lengthy nine-page apology where he acknowledged literally everything he's ever done wrong, down to stealing candy from me as a child during Halloween, and is moving to where Jay Wyant lives. SBRM donors on his own. Egg donor is SCR wed. I think I'm free. I don't have to worry anymore. With them being busy tearing each other apart and younger SIL being sentenced to eight years in federal prison, I think I'm free. Which is a weird sentence to say. I feel like I'm jinxing myself. IVF is going so well. We have our new happy lives. I think that I think I don't need to be back here anytime soon. I hope.